Welcome to episode 74 of Therese Talk. I'm your host, Therese Main. By day, I co-host a morning radio show on a network in New York and Pennsylvania. By night, I'm a podcaster. If you're a woman like me who loves Jesus and just wants to serve her family and community a little better, you're in the right place. If you would, take a moment right now to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Do you ever feel like you're doing all the mom things, but your heart isn't really in it? Kristen Weatherall says the key to fulfillment is looking to Jesus for our example and our encouragement. So if you feel like you're falling short, you're not alone. But the reality is God has given us our children as a gift, and he gives us everything we need to do the job of mothering. Yeah, he really does. But this is, you know, a job on this earth. It's under heaven. And so everything that we know, every single job that we work has been affected by the fall. You know, it's toilsome. And we're dealing with the sin in our own hearts. We're dealing with the sin in our kids' hearts and just the hardship of raising little ones. So I just think that's why it's so hard sometimes. There is so much that happens every day for every mom, so many areas where we can fall short. How can we redeem those moments Mm. so that we don't feel like failures? Well, I think the first step is what we're doing right now is just acknowledging that we will fall short. And that it's okay to admit that, you know, only God is God (laughs) and he made us to reflect him surely and to be his image bearers, but we are not meant to be him. And so I think that acknowledging that is a great start. I think that that will lift kind of a burden of guilt off of our shoulders just to be able to admit I am not omnipresent. I cannot be everywhere all the time and everything to each of my kids. I am not, you know, omniscient. I don't know all things. I'm not going to know what in the world I'm doing some of the time. And I think if we can come to a place of just humbly acknowledging that we are not God, that's actually the best place for us to start. One of the things that you say, even in the introduction for your book, is about the disconnection that we have. Our weariness often seems to come from a disconnection between hands and hearts. We have that physical, everything that needs to be done, and then we have our heart, which deep down does yearn for godly things, but somehow we can't seem to get the two plugged in on the same train. Yeah. And I think that's every mom's experience. Like you said earlier, we love our kids. They are such a gift from the Lord. My husband and I didn't know for uh, a couple of years if we could even have kids. I went through a battle with chronic Lyme disease and it's an autoimmune condition. So we didn't know how it would affect fertility. So when Joanna came along, it was just so clear to us what a gift from God she is. And so as moms, we know this, you know, we know that motherhood is a great privilege. It's not something that we deserve. It's a gift from God. And yet, like we mentioned, it is toilsome. It is hard. And I think the great journey of the Christian life, not just for moms only, but for every believer is learning how to serve the Lord with gladness in a world that's not always easy to live in. And so what is, you know, what does that look like for us as moms to be faithful, to say, Lord, I I actually want to see my kids the way that you do and to love them with your heart. And that's something that only he can produce in us. The Bible is filled with women. And so often I think we feel the need to live up to all of them. And there's a couple things. First of all, we're not seeing an entire woman's life in any account in scripture. We're kind of seeing the highlight reel. It's sort of like the first social media, right? Where you're not Mm. seeing, you know, a mom losing her temper in the minivan because they didn't have minivans then. But who should we be looking to in scripture? And how can we right size those biblical accounts to pull Mm. the gleans of wheats without taking on all of the guilt that comes from realizing we're not Mary? Yeah. Well, Jesus actually says to his disciples, he says, all of scripture points to me. So we want to be whole Bible people, you know, where we're reading stories in the Old Testament and actually saying, how does this person, how does this woman, as you're asking, point me to Jesus? And so I think as we're reading the Bible and we're encountering these women, we're going to see uh, their fallenness. We're going to see that, for example, you know, Sarah doubted the Lord and she laughed at him. When he said, you know, in your old age, you're going to bear a son. She laughed at him. We're going to see that, you know, Hannah could not have children. 
and she was deeply grieved in her spirit and she lamented before the Lord. And I think the Bible actually uses the word anxious. You know, she was anxious before the Lord. And, um, and yet all of these characters, all of these real life people in the Bible point us to the only one who can supply for them and for us. And that's Jesus. And he's also the only one who lived the perfectly humble and obedient life before his father that none of those women could live, that none of um, us can live. And so he's the perfect substitute for us, and he's the perfect savior for us. What does it mean to be a humble mom? Uh, Well, Andrew Murray has a great definition for humility, and it goes like this. Humility is being clothed with the beauty and the blessedness of Jesus. So that's the definition that I used in the book, reflecting on that. And so I think we can say that a humble mom is a mom who uh, not only depends on Jesus, but starts to look more like him because she's dependent on him. It's a mom who knows that she doesn't have what it takes on her own to serve the Lord, to serve her kids, but she knows that she has a really strong God who has served her. And for that reason, she can depend on him and look to him to become more like him. When our babies are born, we take their picture, and then at one month, we take another one, and two months, and three months, and all through their lives. And I don't think that anyone would disagree that kids change. It's normal for moms to change, too, over all those years of parenting. And ideally, we should change and grow to be more like Christ. Why do we kind of deny ourselves the grace to say, okay, I didn't have it all together on day one, but that's okay because I'm going in the right direction. It comes from a good place, I think. It's that we love our kids and we want to do right by them. And so I think as moms, we tend to take, you know, some of that guilt and sense of failure upon ourselves. I know that I do every single day because we actually want to do right by our kids and we want to do right by the Lord. Um, But I think the negative side of that is that Uh, it's hard for us on this side of heaven to see how God is growing us, how he's being faithful to um, mold us through the power of his spirit into the likeness of Jesus. I think it's hard for us to see that. And I think sometimes we expect like linear growth. I should be from point A to point B. And the Christian life doesn't necessarily work that way, that cleanly. A lot of times, you know, we're two steps forward, one step back, and then all around again. And um, I think that that's where it's so helpful to have two things. One, the word of God, because we need we need to hear God's voice. We need to hear, you know, the gospel message freshly every single day and um, allow God's word to shape our mind and to shape our hearts. And then we also need great mom friends who have the same mind as we do, who can affirm us. Perhaps it's also a spouse in your life, you know, someone who can say, I actually see this growth in you. Don't be discouraged. You know, keep looking to Jesus and pressing on because I, I see that he's at work in your life. The big problem is the same big problem that we have in all of our relationships. The big problem is sin. When we find ourselves in the middle of mom sin, maybe even sin against our children in our anger or our frustration, what is the response? What will get us back to humility? Yeah. Well, I would venture to say that maybe one of the most powerful pictures of Jesus's gospel that we can give to our kids is when we have sinned and when we have failed, because that's what it is to come to him. It's to repent and to say, you know, I, I am a sinner and I don't have what it takes to make my way to God on my own, but Jesus, you came in order to bear my sin for me and in order to give me new life and to bridge that gap between me and God. So I think coming to our kids in humility and just saying, I am sorry, I was wrong. And will you forgive me? And being able to draw out that sweet gospel of Christ for them is maybe one of the best ways that we can proclaim Jesus to our kids and also um, receive um, the balm of his forgiveness and his grace every single day. Because I I need that all the time. And um, I found that it It fosters some of the sweetest moments with my kids to talk about him. I love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time so much today. Thank you, Therese. 
Kristen's book is called Humble Moms. It includes a devotional and study guide that's great to do on your own or with a group of moms. You can connect to her book and her ministry on our show notes for this episode. If you've enjoyed this Therese Talk, be sure to subscribe and look for the next episode on Tuesday morning. If you really loved it, consider making a gift of Family Life, the ministry this podcast is a part of. Just go to familylife.org and find out more about what we do. Did you know Family Life offers a variety of podcasts from news to kids to faith? You'll find a favorite on demand at familylife.org slash podcast.